find the elusive passage through the Northwest and bring all of the riches of India and China back to England. As captain of your ship, I know that you can do this. I will, Your Majesty. I will not fail. Martin Frobisher set out from England in 1576 in an effort to find the Northwest Passage to Asia. His expedition was financed by Queen Elizabeth I. She expected him to return with many riches, including gold and silver. Frobisher followed a route across the North Atlantic and then through the many islands in the Canadian Arctic. He traveled through what is now known as Frobisher Strait, which he thought was the Northwest Passage. He was pleased when he found gold ore on some of the islands along the route and decided to return to England rather than continue his voyage. We have found gold! He has found gold! We're rich! Her Majesty the Queen will be so thrilled. Hey! Oh! <laughs> hey we found gold! Our trip has yielded more than I had hoped for. Not only have we found the Northwest Passage, but riches as well. There is a thick black rock that is in abundance on these cold northernly islands. I believe it to be gold ore. So great are these riches that hence, before we sail through the passage to India, we will return to England to show Her Majesty the great wealth that is to be found in this new land. Frobisher gathered as much of the rock as possible and began to make the return voyage through Frobisher Strait navigating the many islands in the Arctic. He returned to England with over 200 tons of what he thought was gold ore. When he was told that it was actually just iron pyrite, he was bitterly disappointed and refused to return to North America again. Enter! Tell me what this gold is worth. You think this is gold? <laughs> You're but a fool! This is iron pyrite! Oh! Gold ore and iron pyrite are rocks that are easily confused by the uneducated eye. They are both black and contain shimmering gold flecks. Frobisher was not the first nor the last explorer to think that he had found riches and gold. He was disappointed to find out that it was iron pyrite. Iron pyrite is not as shiny as gold, it is lighter and does not reflect the sunlight. Also, you can put a small indentation in a piece of gold with your fingernail, but it's impossible with iron pyrite. The most important difference is if you hit a small piece of iron pyrite with a hammer, it will break into many pieces. A gold nugget will not. I have been made a fool. It is a harsh, barren land full of rocky ground, not suitable for agriculture of any kind. In the winter it is bitterly cold, and a ship that lingers too long will be captured in the ice. That such a place could brim with gold ore filled me with wonder, but alas, I was taken for a fool. The dark black rock is only pyrite, fool's gold, as it is called. Well, I will not be a fool any longer, and I will not visit that wasteland again. Frobisher was only the first of many men to be deceived by fool's gold in the Arctic. However, his disappointment blinded him to the real wealth of natural resources in the region, the animals such as the beaver that 50 years later would be at the center of the fur trade. <laughs>